How's it going, New World? Sephir here, and today we will be taking a look at territories, but mainly owning a territory, and what that looks like from the governor's point of view. So let's go ahead and walk in here, and as we can see, we do have a territory planning board, but more importantly, I'm going to go upstairs here to the main console unit, which is going to be the governor's desk. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look at this, and as you can see, Territories do come with taxes, so we'll just start from the top down, and we'll just look at all this. Uh, so if you do not pay this tax, then you will have your territory downgraded. So I believe that means that your stations will lose rank, and they kind of give you a time limit to do it. So you have to pay every seven days, and here I'll go ahead and pay my tax. It's very simple. Um, it tells you a bit of information, how much time you have left to do it. Select pay. You can choose to play, pay from your personal wallet or the company's wallet whichever one you prefer, so I will pay personal here, and I will just cash that in. Great, I paid my tax, fantastic. Um, so now there's another payment. Uh, that next payment is due in two days, or is at least able to be paid in two days, and it will probably have like a two to three day grace window from which you can pay that. Uh, so I believe that other ranks can pay this as well. If you take a look at the ranks here, it should tell you what the governor can do. Um, just pause for a second I guess you can read through all those lists here is what the console can do so you can see that they kind of share some of the governor's capabilities and the things that they can do with the treasury and the structures down here so you know they can modify taxes and uh, they can build and replace stuff in the company fort they can start and cancel territory upgrades all these different things this is what the officer can do and the slightly grayed out means they cannot do those things and this is the settler so Keep in mind that those ranks will be able to adjust these functionalities. Uh, if we take a look at the taxes and fee section over here, this is where I can set the taxes. So let's say I want to change this one. I believe there's a 24 hour window on this. So if I just jack this all the way up to 200% property tax, uh, it will also show you a global average of like what everybody sets theirs at. You can also lower it all the way down to a minimum of 5%. So let's just go extreme for this case. It'll ask you like a next, uh, like, you know, are you sure you want to do this and you won't be able to change it until the next period update and the, and like when it will update and reflect. So we'll go ahead and do that. You can see it's now in place. You see this cooldown timer on the right here, 23 hours, 59 minutes. So that's going to be locked in place for at least one day. So what you can kind of do with this is you could adjust those taxes for like maybe have them normal or slightly high during the week and then maybe on saturdays or sundays lower them down to completely nothing and just you know get some good favor with the community that's my plan at least i think that i just want to you know have a crafting day where hey everything's super cheap guys don't worry about it putting it down to bare minimum and you know come to our town and craft everything uh so once again all these are the same it's going to show you that average percent uh that's the property tax at the top that just affects how much you pay for your house uh, to upkeep it. The trading tax would be how much you're paying when you use the marketplace or the trading post, which is essentially the amount of gold that it takes as a cut to list an item or like when you successfully sell an item. Uh, there's also the, uh, we'll look at the ranges too. That's 2.5% on the minimum and 25% on the maximum. So there's that. Uh, the next one would be the crafting fee. It's pretty straightforward. This is going to be your fee per item crafted, right? So it's going to take a percent of that cut. So you can increase that all the way to 3% and all the way down to 0.5%. Uh, the final thing will be the refining fee, which is basically when you turn like fiber into linen, this type of thing. Uh, so you'll see that there as well, going from 0.5 all the way up to 3%. So those are the tax functionalities and the timers for it. There's also a payroll here, which will have a statement. It's going to tell you how much you're making from each of these taxes so that you can kind of calculate what is a good thing for you to do. Like, should I raise them a bit more to pay for the upgrades and some of the taxes that you have to pay as a governor? Because you do have to pay quite a lot, especially when it comes to upgrading things within your Ford and things of that nature. So don't expect all territories to be minimum crafting fee. If they are, they might not survive for long. So we'll see how that turns out. Uh, you can also check the days of them and see like, okay, which date is this and uh, you know, what has happened there. Um, so there, that's that. 
Um, once you're in the check over here in the green, after you paid your thing, that means you're good to go and you don't have to worry about anything. If you own multiple territories, you will have to go to each territory and pay that tax in person at the place. You can also assign your console members or whoever else to go ahead and help do that for you. So maybe dividing that responsibility amongst your leadership is a great idea. So that is the governor's desk. We will look at the other uh, interaction object here, which is gonna be the territory planning board. And this will have your upgrades. This is what basically puts town board missions on the board. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go out here and check the town board. That is not the town board, that is the war board. I got juped. All right, here's the town board and we can see that there's a town upkeep section. This is basic stuff. Um, so that will give you territory standing and upgrading your town functionality. There's an up upgrade fort category, which has nothing there. We'll get to that in a moment. And then there's upgrade town and improved lifestyle. So when you start these projects, there will be like a meter above them, up to 3,000 points that'll fill up as people in that territory complete that project. And those projects are started from these areas. So here we'll go ahead and uh, we'll select upgrade fort. This is fine. And so on the left, you can see the fort levels. You see a fort, a bastion, a keep, a castle, and a citadel. So these are the upgrades once you can do these things. Uh, taking a look over here, this is the hard point level two upgrade. This is gonna be for your emplacements. So it'll allow you to have additional turrets, as you can see it branching out to the side where you can basically see these little pinpoints around the fort and how you would defend it. So getting access to more hard points would be good that means you can have more turrets on the wall so i believe you start off with six as it is placed out there you can keep upgrading it i'm not sure exactly how many it goes up to but we can figure that out um, and so if you start up this thing it'll tell you uh, project reward is plus six in placement points so you would get extra points on there so that might be something good to upgrade um, you can put like the ballistas the burning oil and different things like that there uh, this would be the town gate or the gate structure. Whenever you upgrade this, it's going to increase its HP and it's just like a tier thing. And you can see like everything here has a tier and then it's usually got a time and also a project cost. So like 500 gold is pretty standard for a lot of these upgrades. It does go up higher as you upgrade them. So keep that in mind. This is why you want to have some taxes because you're going to need to be affording these upgrades for everything. And then over on the right, we have combat mechanisms. Uh, so first we have the repeater. This is a really good anti-personnel gun. It's great at getting an individual target uh, shredded. So this is something you may want to rely on when you're capturing a fort or defending a fort as it can do both quite nicely. Uh, the next thing we have is the burning oil vat, which is a device that is over top of gates. You activate it to pour oil down on. So it's good when people are trying to siege the gate or break the gate and you could just dump like an AOE fire field on top of them and it just pretty much shuts down any advancement on a, on a gate wall. Uh, the next thing we're looking at is the Warhorn. The Warhorn is interesting. Basically, from what we tested, you could use this device to give everyone on your team a boost of defense and HP regeneration. So it's kind of like a rallying cry like... Um, you know, hey, we really need to win this engagement. It does have a cooldown. I'm not sure the specifics on exactly how long that is, but you can't just like keep doing it all the time, right? So you'll have to basically have someone assigned to this and do it at the right moment. Uh, it can be destroyed along with all these other uh, siege things on top. You can also repair it with repair parts that come from the supply station from the defender's side. Uh, this is a defender's side specific item. Uh, as well as the burning oil vat. The repeater is something that can be used on both sides as a placement. Um, so there is also this, which is going to be the explosive cannon. Um, this one is very good at getting rid of clumps of enemies. It's great to defend a point because you can just shoot in the, you know, the flag point and it just kind of nukes the crap out of everyone. It's phenomenal, but the thing is people are going to be targeting these. They're going to be targeting the people setting in these. They're going to be targeting the actual structure itself. So these are a high priority in Siege as they will do quite a lot of damage to a point if left unchecked. And then the final unit, which is going to be Defender's only item, is called the Ballista. This is a long-ranged harpoon cannon that basically 
does a lot of damage to siege engines or one particular target. I mean, I guess it would be quite unfortunate if this somebody shot this thing at you specifically instead of the siege engines, it might hurt. Uh, but I guess you could take a little bit of solace in the fact that they kind of wasted that on you instead of like one of your cannons. Uh, so there would be that. Uh, so those are basically the structures. We'll go ahead and upgrade um, hard points here. And we'll go ahead and start it. As you can see, again, the choice to pay from personal wallet or company wallet is present. So you can choose whichever you want. And congratulations, we got it. And check out the town board project in the town center. So we will go ahead and do exactly that. And as you can see, this project is activated here. We do see that. If I were to go over here and try to start this, it says, warning, you want to replace the active project. It's going to cancel your project here. So you can only do one at a time, right? One of these at a time. So going over here again, doing it again. Yep, canceling the project. So this is all the same. This page is the same. If you go out one, it's all under Ford upgrade. So you can have one of these going at any given moment. And this should take, I believe, 24 hours to complete. Uh, so it's going to be quite a while, <laughs> as we can see that. Uh, so we'll go out here and check the town board. And yes, I remember it's on the right, not the war board. Not getting juked this time. And now you can see new missions popping up. And these are the town board missions that people like. Like you see this one here. It's pretty nice. This is that weapon quest. 8,000 XP almost. And uh, yeah, the material cost is pretty cheap for that. Maybe a little bit of star metal and that's about it. But, you know, these are some nice projects to get like a decent XP boost on. Um, so yeah, you can see that correspondence. Now we have access to more quests in our town, which means more people are going to want to come here and, you know, participate because there's many things for them to do. There's experience to get, there's reputation to be earned and all that good stuff. Okay. Jumping into the next one, upgrading the Hamlets. So we will click on this. Uh, this would be a, once again, all of these are linked. So you can pick one of these. You cannot pick two of these. So you would pick something and upgrade it. So as you can see, all the costs are about 100 gold. You can see this scaling here, hamlet to village, town, city, capital. And this is just saying that um, it's raising the threat level, essentially, for the corrupted. So the higher threat or like more established your town is, the more the corrupted are going to want to come and like devote stronger forces to battle you. Um, so that's also going to be a thing. And as your units and tiers get up higher, the uh, you'll be able to get access to different crafting stations and things of that nature. So we'll go ahead and go over here. We're going to pick the smelter. We're going to upgrade this. So that's going to be the tier 4 station. It's going to take a day. So I believe all of these are one day. So as you can imagine, crafters, you're not going to be able to see very many high-level crafting stations within the launch of the game, right? Because everything's going to take a day to upgrade. And not all the territories are like this. As you can see, I have some level t uh, tier 3 stations. And the reason that these are tier 3 is because this is Morningdale on the map, uh, which is a you know higher location. So uh, basically, that's going to allow us to get start off with better structures as opposed to like Windsward, which would start off with all level 2 um, stations. Uh, so we'll go ahead and upgrade uh, Smelter, I believe we said. 100 gold, pay out of the pocket again. Same structure. Congratulations, we see another town board structure. And then if we go over here, I say I want to do Arcana. I want to upgrade this. It's going to be like, wait, are you sure? You're going to cancel the other project and your progress will be lost. So that's the last thing you want to do. Make sure your console and officers are not canceling these projects because it will screw it up. Like if this gets 90% done and someone starts a new project, all that time is wasted and it sets your town back immensely. So huge, massive mess up. Do not make that mistake. Uh, so we will go back to the town board, check it out. And as you can see, Smelter upgrade to tier four. That is the project mission, zero out of 3000 points. And now we have new missions here so we can deliver some stone brick or make a different set of armor, all this stuff. So people in the territory, outside of your faction, in your faction, in your guild, doesn't matter. If they come here and do this quest, you will get points. So here we see 35, this one's worth 35, this one's worth 80. So it's gonna fill up that bar. And once it's at 3000 during that 24 hour period, that means it's successful and it will upgrade. So you need to make sure you're managing that at the same time. Okay, so we'll go back to the final area here, which is gonna be the improved lifestyle buff. Now this 
is actually set into three categories, I believe. So the categories here are gathering buffs, crafting buffs, and combat buffs. So I'll go ahead and pause on each of those just so you can take a look at what they're doing. And we'll go through and uh, kind of click on them here in a second. So these are the gathering. And this is the crafting. And going down here, this would be the combat buffs. So we're going to go ahead and pick some. So I'm going to say that mining is the way to go. So we're going to click on this and it's going to give me mining quantity 20% for three days. For 2,500 gold, quite expensive. But if you got a guild effort and you know you control this area, you want to get a bunch of star metal because you're in Morningdale, this is, you know, this is the route to go. You could also go with harvesting. I know there's a lot of silk weave in Morningdale, so I may want to pick this one. But we said mining, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll activate the project, pay out of the pocket, and boom, here we go. We have a new upgrade on the town board. Um, then we'll go over here to this other buff. We can start this other one, and oh yeah, we do see that it is locking us out here for this, so we will be replacing this. So it does look like you can kind of choose one of these buffs. So you can choose between a combat buff or, you know, uh, a different type of buff. So um whichever one you may want to focus on more so we'll go back to that board and we do see that there is that additional buff at the bottom it looks like it's an active miners resolve so we're working towards that buff and this one is 3500 instead of 3000 so do note that some of these will differ depending on the upgrade that they are so if we go ahead and go back in here uh we can check out some of the other ones i mean these are pretty straightforward uh, there is this that increases the base gear score for weapons. It doesn't say by how much, which is interesting, so we would have to test it. And actually, let's just go ahead and um, upgrade one of these because I do want to see what it is. So we'll cancel the other one and we'll go with uh, we'll go with the weaponsmith. Um, we'll say yes to cancel the project and then we'll pay the price. And then boom, you see we lost the other one. The miner's resolve is now gone. We are upgrading this, and when this does upgrade, I will touch back and put uh, you know, a comment in there showing exactly how much uh, gear score that's increasing it by, or what that buff's actually doing. Uh, so you can see that there's different buffs here, you know, chefs, armors, patients, all that type of stuff. So um, that might be something you're interested in if you have some tier five crafting stations and your crafters are aiming to make some of that 600 gear score items, then this is gonna be the way to go you're going to need these buffs to get up there uh the final section is that combat buffs so we do have uh, increased damage to corrupted here i mean i'm not sure what this is for right now maybe you want to defend an invasion uh, that would be my best guess like a really high level invasion that'd probably be the way to go as that will help you out quite a lot for that uh you could also do a lot of mirror guard farming or something of that nature but i think invasion is probably a strong suit there uh, there is a base thing, which is uh, base HP by 10% for three days. Uh, so, I mean, it is what it is. Defense recovery, which I believe is just referring to, like, stamina and things of that nature. So, these are buffs that you could basically get um, in this area. So, basically, uh, you're going to get these buffs if you own a house up here at the top who own a house in this territory. So, if you own a house in this territory, you will get these buffs. Uh, they are time limited, so you have to keep upgrading them. Kind of expensive, as you can see, 2,500 gold, so that's definitely something to look out for. Okay, well, with that being said, that's pretty much all of the functionality for the um, governor's like position point of view. So that should hopefully give you some insight. Maybe you're a new governor and you're not sure what some of these things mean, or you want to educate some of your officers and consuls on how to use this and the do's and don'ts to like, don't make this mistake. Don't start that territory over or that buff over and things of that nature. Or maybe you're just an average company member and you want to see what your governor is doing or should be doing. Maybe he's doing some sneaky stuff and not telling people. Who knows, whatever that may be, but uh, that should give you a lot more information because I know a lot of people won't be able to see that perspective and it's kind of hard to understand unless you visually see that. Uh, so thanks again for watching, everyone. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to subscribe, like, and hit the bell, and we will catch you next time in the following video. Thanks for your time.